The Twilight Zone was a classic television series that quickly became a cultural phenomenon. Rod Serling blended science fiction, horror, and fantasy to create a unique and often unsettling atmosphere. Over the course of five seasons and 156 episodes, The Twilight Zone explored themes of morality, humanity, and the unknown. The show's impact on popular culture can still be felt today with countless movies, TV shows, and books drawing inspiration from its groundbreaking storytelling and imaginative visuals. In this video, we'll take a look at one of The Twilight Zone's most iconic and memorable episodes. It's a story written by science fiction and horror novelist Richard Matheson a little sci-fi fantasy piece called The Invaders. The Invaders is a classic example of the Twilight Zone's ability to create suspense and tension without dialogue and very limited but innovative special effects. This particular episode aired in 1961, and it tells the story of an elderly woman who lives alone in a remote cabin and is attacked by tiny alien invaders. The episode was shot in real time in a fast-paced and tension-filled half-hour. It's one of only a few Twilight Zone episodes that doesn't follow the usual opening formula, which is a teaser followed by Serling coming on screen. In this episode, we open with a shot of a primitive cabin with Serling doing a voiceover. The viewers don't know anything about where this takes place or what's going on. Rod's monologue opens up with, This is one of the out of the way places, the unvisited places, bleak, wasted, dying. Rod goes on to describe the crude farmhouse and the woman whose only problem has been getting enough food to eat. Until, of course, she enters the Twilight Zone. When Matheson first started writing for the show, he thought Serling liked to write his own opening and closing monologues. Later on, he found out that wasn't the case, and he started writing them himself. This monologue is written in Matheson style, and it works, not only because of what is being said, but also because of how the words are put together. Its short length and harsh language grab the viewer's attention right away, and it gives them a glimpse into this character's world. In an interview, Matheson said that his original script for The Invaders was closer to his script for Amelia in Trilogy of Terror. It was titled Devil Doll, and producer Buck Houghton and Serling thought it was too gruesome for the Twilight Zone. They suggested that he set the story on another planet and tone down the violence. If you're familiar with Trilogy of Terror, you can see the similarities to the Amelia story in this episode. When director Douglas Hayes read the script for The Invaders, he knew he had to keep the set design as simple as possible, so viewers would believe that the show was happening somewhere on Earth. Inside, the woman's house was kept very basic, with no reference to anything specifically on Earth. Composer Jerry Goldsmith delivers a striking and memorable score that makes the episode stand out from other Twilight Zones. In a method very unlike the way TV music is handled today, the music for this episode was conducted live to picture. Some stock zone music is mixed in, but much of this episode was written specifically for the invaders. Goldsmith's use of staccato strings echoes the way Bernard Herrmann used strings for the classic movie Psycho, which came out the year before. Even with a solid script by Matheson and a creative director in Douglas Hayes, the episode really belongs to the great performance by Agnes Moorhead. Moorhead didn't want to do the episode at first when she found out she didn't have any dialogue, but Rod Serling and director Hayes were finally able to convince her. Moorhead, a veteran actress in films dating back to the 1930s, is probably best known to today's viewers as Samantha's mother and Dora on Bewitched. She turns in an outstanding one-woman performance with no dialogue, and had to rely on grunts, groans, mannerisms, and facial expressions to move the story along. Moorhead had studied under famous mime performer Marcel Marceau when she was younger and was able to convey a wide range of emotions without ever speaking a word. She was specifically sought out by Hayes for the role 
as he believed she had the right combination of vulnerability and strength to pull off the character. The invaders themselves were just puppets that different crew members moved by hand. Hayes and the rest of the crew wore black long sleeve shirts and moved the puppets by putting their hands through a hole in the back side of the puppet and using their fingers to move the legs. That's why the spacemen moved so slowly and stiffly. Ironically, Richard Matheson himself was not a big fan of how the episode turned out. He thought it was a little too slow paced and the movements of the tiny invaders were unnatural. On today's high def TVs, the spacemen just look like little toys. But this was filmed back in 1961 with most people viewing the episode on tiny black and white televisions. The production of the invaders was also a challenging one due to the episode's reliance on visual storytelling and creative camera work. Director Douglas Hayes had to find ways to convey the action and emotion of the story without relying on any dialogue. The production team also had to create a convincing set for the cabin, which was both small and cramped. The set was designed to look as realistic as possible, with a fireplace, a bed, and other furniture that appeared to be worn and weathered. To create the atmosphere of the isolated cabin, the production team used low lighting and atmospheric sound effects, such as the howling wind and the creaking of the cabin's walls. The twist ending of the invaders is one of the greatest in Twilight Zone's history. You're left guessing right up until the shock ending who exactly are these tiny alien invaders and what is their purpose? The twist is delivered in the very last scene of the episode and the voice heard on the radio contacting Earth is actually the voice of director Douglas Hayes himself. Despite all the challenges, The Invaders was a critical and a commercial success. The episode remains one of the most beloved and iconic episodes of The Twilight Zone. The production of The Invaders was a testament to the creativity and innovation of The Twilight Zone production team, and one of the reasons that The Twilight Zone, in my opinion, remains the greatest anthology series of all time. What about you guys? Do you love this classic episode as much as I do? What are your favorite memories of The Twilight Zone? Did you have any other favorite episodes? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. But most of all, thanks for watching. This is Rich from Rerun Zone. I'll see you in my next video.